Hi, and welcome back to Cal's Prep. Let's take a look at a few more examples of the kinds of easy and medium questions we'll encounter on the SAT math section. Anna burned 15 calories per minute running for X minutes and 10 calories per minute hiking for Y minutes. She spent a total of 60 minutes running and hiking and burned 700 calories. The system of equations shown below can be used to determine how much time Anna spent on each exercise. How many minutes X did Anna spend running? Well, that first equation looks like it has to do with the 700 calories, and the second one has to do with the 60 minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and set these equations equal to each other. But first, it looks like that first equation could do with a little bit of simplification. So 15x plus 10y equal to 700. If I divide both sides by 5, I should reduce it down to 3x plus 2y is equal to 140. Now, that second equation in my system of equations, x plus y is equal to 60, it makes me think that the addition subtraction method is going to be the best here, as long as I multiply that second equation by a negative 2 to add them together and cancel out my y's. We are, after all, trying to find x, so now we know that x is equal to 140 plus negative 120, which is, of course, 20 minutes. C. B rather. <laughs> Jenny has a job that pays $8 per hour plus tips. Jenny worked for four hours on Monday and made $65 in all. Which equation can be used to find t, the amount Jenny made in tips? All right, well, they're all set equal to 65, so that part's correct. But the only one that looks like it's the $8 per hour for four hours, which is, of course, 32, looks like it's going to be answer d. So choice d should be the one to find tips. Which of the following equations is graphed in the figure, well, not above, but to the left? All right, we've got our intercept point at 0, 1, and we've got a point 2, negative 4. So these are all in slope-intercept form. And I can go ahead and cross out two of them because they are clearly not showing the 0, 1 intercept. They are describing a 0, negative 1 intercept. So I have to choose between these two. And of course, the slope here for my line is going to be a negative slope. So between these two choices, I'm not going to choose the positive slope. I'll choose the one that corresponds to my line, A. At a bottling company, machine A fills a bottle with spring water, and machine B accepts the bottle only if the number of fluid ounces is between 7 and 9 tenths and 8 and 1 tenth. If the machine B accepts a bottle containing x fluid ounces, which of the following describes all possible values of x? All right, well, all possible values of x, that's not going to be an equation answer. So A and B are out. It's going to be some sort of inequality. So it'll be less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, or just less than or greater than. So x is going to be between this, the 7 and 9 tenths and the 8 and 1 tenth. So all of our answers have without the equal. So it's going to be about 2 tenths of a gap. And of course, the absolute value of x plus 8 will not be less than 1 tenth. It's going to be greater than 1 tenth, which means our answer is c. All right, the equation x minus 3 over 2 is equal to 1 over x minus 4 and has two solutions. What's the product? Right away, I realized that one of the solutions will not be x equal to 4, because that will make one of my denominators 0, and that breaks mathematics, as we know. So let's go ahead and find out what the two solutions are, and let's multiply them together eventually. But first, let's cross multiply and find 2 equal now to x minus 3 times the quantity x minus 4. So x squared minus 7x plus 12. Subtract 2 from both sides, and we're going to get x squared minus 7x plus 10 now. And to factor that out, looks like that last term and the middle term are going to make me want to get a negative 5 and a negative 2. So x should equal oh, not negative 5, positive 5 and a positive 2 because of course if x minus 5 times x minus 2 is equal to 0 that's what will make it equal 0. So what's the product? 5 times 2? 10. And it looks like we're up to 4 minutes and 36 seconds, which if we split evenly among 5 questions, it looks like it's a little over 55 seconds per question. Not bad. 
As always, I want to thank you so much for stopping by Callus Prep. My name is Ricardo Calderon, and we hope to see you again soon.